Uh, after there are dueling directors that are nominated to the nation's top consumer watchdog group, the White House just weighed in, and they're downplaying some of the drama we've seen thus far. Not surprising, really. The CNN White House correspondent, Abby Phillips, just got off the phone with the Trump administration. And Abby, who's going to be in charge come Monday? Well, according to the White House, uh, they're saying that on Monday, Mick Mulvaney, who's the current Office of Management and Budget Director, and who was last night named to be the interim CFPB director, will be in charge on Monday. And they still expect uh, deput the deputy director to show up for the job, even though uh, Richard Cordray, on his way out, said uh, that he wanted her to be the interim director. The White House is basically saying Trump's decision is a routine. It's it's very normal. Uh, this is the way that the process is supposed to work. And they don't expect any drama or any legal fights. Uh, now, Mick Mulvaney is uh, a vehement critic of the CFPB. Uh, and let's take a listen to some of the things that he's had to say about this agency that he is about to lead soon. It's a wonderful example of how a bureaucracy will function if it has no accountability to anybody. Um, it turns up being a joke, and that's what the CFPB really has been in a, in a, in a, in a sick, sad kind of way, because you've got an institution that has tremendous authority over what y'all do for a living, over your businesses, over your members. So it's not clear whether or not Mick Mulvaney will be chosen by Trump to be the permanent director of the CFPB. The White House is saying an administration official told us this morning uh, that the president will make a choice in the coming weeks, uh, and that person will have to be confirmed by the Senate. Christy. All right. Abby Phillip, we appreciate it so much. Thank you. So, Martin, let's talk about this agency. Yeah, what does it do? Many people are maybe mystified, but actually does some very important things as far as protecting all of us financially. According to the Joint Economic Committee on Capitol Hill, the watchdog group has several accomplishments aside from just keeping tabs on Wall Street. More recently, it forced Wells Fargo to pay full refunds to customers after employees set up those phony accounts. The Bureau also gave $130 million dollars to service members, veterans, and their families that were harmed by predatory financial practices. And then it made credit card costs more transparent, saving consumers more than $16 billion in fees. So Michael Calhoun is with us, the president for, of the Center for Responsible Lending. Stephen Moore, CNN senior economics analyst and former Trump economic advisor with us as well. Thank you both for being here. Hi. We appreciate it. Good morning. Uh, Michael, I, uh, you told the New York Times, and I want to quote this here, that naming Mick Mulvaney someone who's adamantly anti-consumer, rewards financial predators, and fails to put consumers first. Why do you believe that? <clears throat> Director Mulvaney has publicly said that he opposes the very existence of this Consumer Protection Agency, which, as you've noted, has returned more than $15 billion to working families and provided protections that they need for financial services. It's not a sad, sick joke to those families. They need that protection now. And as what we have today is an attempted backdoor procedure to avoid the clear provisions in the law. Congress deliberately and very explicitly set out that in the absence of the director, the deputy director takes charge of the agency until there is a confirmed director. And it had two competing versions of that provision, one from the House and one from the Senate. And the House version specifically allowed the procedure that the Trump administration wanted to use. That was rejected and instead the Senate language was adopted and now the administration needs to follow the law in those procedures and it's particularly you know, we're going into the uh, holiday season where people are making lots of big financial transactions mm -hmm. purchasing things on credit the consumer bureau has made that safer for people we need to build on that not destroy it as director mulvaney has said he wishes to do. Stephen, uh, look, I mean, as a South Carolina senator, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, a congressman, M Mulvaney, he co-sponsored the legislation to essentially kill this organization. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the fact that the president has now appointed him uh, the interim director here? 
Well, Donald Trump has said he wants to get rid of the Consumer Financial Protection Board. I mean, this is an agency that, uh, look, one of the reasons the economy has boomed so much in just the 10 months that Donald Trump has been president has been the very aggressive deregulation, getting government off the back of businesses, let, letting them succeed. And, you know, what, when it comes to the Consumer Financial Protection Board, I just wanted to correct one thing um, where you talked about the Wells Fargo case. I mean, this is a case where this is probably the biggest financial scandal in a decade. And the CFPB, which has a multi-billion dollar budget, was asleep at the wheel. It never even uh, exposed this. This was exposed by the media and other get, private didn't investigators. Didn't they get a hundred million dollars? No, I know, but it was they get after the fact. I, mean, was, in fines I know, from but Wells that was. Fargo? What they, the problem was they didn't, they didn't uh, detect this. And everybody's like, well, we've got these hundreds and hundreds of regulators. What were they doing when the biggest financial scandal in, in a decade w went uh, you know, right over their heads and they never even saw it coming? And they, they have to be accountable for that kind of mistake. So are you saying that you think that the, the Bureau has to go away completely? Yeah, we've got. We already have about five or six different consumer financial protection agencies but in the they federal haven't government. Brought the in the Treasury, millions of dollars and fixed I mean, things the way this this bureau mm -hmm. has. Sorry. And in the case of Wells Fargo, they imposed a record fine, a I record know, fine were... against Wells Fargo. Right. We just had the Equifax breach. You need the Consumer Bureau exactly for those reasons. Who's standing up? The, you need this Consumer Bureau. And listen, the public has no doubts. We do an annual poll, and voters of all parties overwhelmingly support the Consumer Protection Agency and the specific rules that it has put in place and proposed. So the public is clear on this. They need and they want these protections, and that's why this administration is trying to do this undercover backdoor procedure rather than just go through normal order. This can all be resolved quickly. The administration simply needs to nominate someone, have them vetted, and have them go through the confirmation progress and let people vote on the record whether or not they want to destroy the Consumer Bureau rather than have it done through this backdoor well, procedure. Stephen, why would that right. not work in your opinion, or is that the way to go? Look, I, this it, one of the problems with this agency is it's, it's one of the strangest agencies ever created by, uh, by federal legislation. It is not accountable to anyone. Did you know that, for example, the Congress does not even appropriate the money to, uh, to the uh, to CFPB? And, and that is the case with and, most financial regulators. The Congress does have authority. I know, and the Congress does have authority over it. We the, can't hear both of you. We the, can't hear both of you. You're the both reason talking. that's such a terrible system is that means the CFPB is not accountable to anyone. We're discovering now that the, the CFPB is not accountable to the president because apparently he can't, the president can't uh, get rid of the director of the agency. It's not accountable to Congress because they don't con have control of its budget and it's, its finances. It's totally Who is accountable? Accountable? The big question at the end of the day right yeah. now, too, is where does this thing go and who's going to head it up come Monday morning when people yeah. go back to work? Who is in charge and where do we go from here? That is still a, a real gray area. Michael Calhoun, Stephen Moore, I'm sorry we're out of time, but thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you for having me.